Welcome back to another episode of Raw Talk where we give zero Fs. I know y'all need to do me a solid smash that like. It's free. Smash that subscription. That's free as well. Today, I'm going to take you back to ACI, Appalachian Correctional Institution in the state of Florida, where I met a dude by the name of Casper. Casper was a gangster disciple who was known for putting work in on the compound. And when I say putting work... At Appalachian Correction Institution, you actually have to put some type of work in to be known for putting work in on the compound. Appalachian Correction Institution is a very big prison. They have down the hill, which is closed doors behind the door, HO4s and people with high housing levels or murder charges. And up the hill is for people with low custody levels, open bay dorms. Sometimes they'll throw a couple medium custodies and intermingle them up the hill. Long story short, I was down the hill with Casper. And I became cool with Casper through a mutual friend named C. Now, me, C, and Casper, C was one of my brothers. Me, C, and Casper, Casper really didn't have a workout partner. There was approximately 100 gangster disciples on the compound at the time from various uh, branches or sets. And Casper was under the gangster disciples. Casper was, like I said, he was one of those GDs that was known for putting in work, but he didn't have a lot of friends. Me and Casper, we actually became cool. And, I, you know, I kind of looked at him as a solid individual. We went from working out on the rec yard to, to actually putting in work on other people on the compound. And when I say this, I say this wholeheartedly. We, I've been in the cell with Casper when knives were pulled and Casper had to put work in. And I've watched it. I've watched the GDs on the compound come up. Now, I'm telling you over a course of time, the things that I've watched Casper have to deal with. I watched the GDs on the compound come up with a bylaw that no white people can be part of Gangster Disciples. I watched Casper fight the head of the GDs for that very reason. I watched him go in the cell and get his behind, let me be YouTube appropriate, his behind handed to him. Casper was an individual known for standing on his two feet and standing on his 10 before we start this video. Now, Casper had a lot of troubles. He would go in and out of confinement for various re reasons, whether it be disrespecting an official or putting some type of work in the compound. At this very time, we were at Appalachian Correction and I was in R3 and Casper had just got out of confinement and they moved him into R1. When he got out of confinement, it was about, I would say, around 8.30, 9 o'clock at night when they did the confinement release and they let him out of confinement. It was around count time, so everybody had to be in their cell. Casper gets put in a cell with some random guy who just came in from another camp. Now, you got to keep in mind, there these camps, people fluctuate. There are new people coming in and out of these camps all the time. This might be your permanent compound, but there are still people leaving and coming all the time, all the time. Now, Casper got put into the room with one of these individuals that just came to this compound from another compound. I really didn't know much about the dude, neither did anybody else on the compound. All I know is after master count time, they let us out for a couple hours. We talked to Casper through the window. Everything was good. If anybody had been to ACI and you've been in our dorm, you know, R1, R2, R3, you sit there and you communicate through the window. You sit there and talk what's going on. Hey, shoot me a pack, whatever. You know, we had to make sure Casper was all right. Hey, man, are you good? He said, nah, shoot me a pack. So we said, all right, bet. So we shot him a pack over. You know, a pack can consist of, you know, a little bit of tobacco, some peanut butter and jellies, maybe a honey bun, a soup or two, you know, and maybe a little K2 so you can sell, not smoke, so you can sell. Now, when I was at ACI, the compound had a structure. If anybody's been on a compound with a structure, that means if you smoke K2 and you twack out on the floor, you will be violated by your set or your gang. And if you are part of a structure, that's what's going to happen. If you're not part of a structure, go ahead. Feel free to smoke, twack out, fall on the floor. But if you are part of a movement such as the Latin Kings, the Zoes, the Crips, the Bloods, you have structures and laws that you have to fall under and you have rules that you have to obey. It sounds like shit, like, damn, I'm in prison already obeying the, the officer's rules. Now I got to obey my gang's rules, but... 
it just is what it is, you know. You know, you will have as a gang member, and this is not promoting gangs or anything, but in Florida prisons as a gang member, you will have a lot more leeway connections and outlets than somebody who, who is not in the gang or not affiliated. Now, that being said, we shot the pack over to Casper. Everything was good. They let us out for those couple hours. Boom, boom. They did mass account. We all go in. We locked down for the night. The next morning, they called child. 5.30 in the morning. Child, child. Doors start popping. Pop, 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 pop. We go down. R1 and R2 and R3 all mingle up in the sally port. I hear whispers going around. Hey, did you hear what, what, what happened to Casper? Did you hear what happened to Casper? No, no, what happened to Casper? Apparently, Casper got friendly with his roommate who just came from another compound. Apparently, Casper decided to smoke K2 with his roommate after lockdown. The same K2 that we put in the bag for him. Now, like I said, we put it in the bag for him to sell, not to smoke. Casper took it upon himself to smoke K2 with an individual who he knew nothing about. Behind a locked door. After count time. The COs are in the pod. They, they have their own little uh, CO station in the middle of the pod. They look through two sets of glasses. There's a, 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 a officer station. Glass. A hallway with a sally port. A plexiglass window, and then you, all the way in the back in your little bitty cell, your little six by nine behind a locked door. So you can scream, help! And nobody's going to be there to save you. Casper took it upon himself to sit there and smoke K2 with this individual who he knew nothing about. This individual, while they were both high on K2, took Casper's knife. While they were sitting on the bed next to each other. Now, a lot of people are like, why were they sitting on the bed together? Well, I mean, a top bunk, a bottom bunk. Both people ain't going to sit on the top bunk. You're going to fold the mat back and y'all going to chill on the bottom bunk, maybe play some cards or whatever. They, apparently, this is the story. And the story was verified. Casper and the guy were sitting there smoking K2. The guy snuck Casper's knife away from Casper. Was sitting on the bed next to Casper. Pulled the knife out, stabbed Casper in the leg, turned Casper over, and raped him. The reason everybody was saying, where's Casper? What happened to Casper? What's the story on Casper? And the story went around, and it circulated, and it became verified Casper was in medical with a leg wound and with wounds on his backside that we do not need to talk about on YouTube. See, there's a lesson to be learned here. And it, it was a lesson I learned immediately. Don't get high with people you don't know. Don't become friendly. Don't open doors with people you don't know. You don't even have to get high. Do not open doors in the Department of Corrections with people you do not know. At least spend the time and get to know somebody before you open any type of door, such as, hey, bro, can I borrow a soup? No, I don't know you. I don't know you from a can of paint. I don't know if you're going to pay me back. I've never seen you hit the window. So it's a no. Don't open those doors. See, Casper opened that door. He sat on that bunk with that dude. He smoked K2 with that dude. He ended up getting too high to where he wasn't in his right mind. The dude took his knife out, stabbed Casper, and violently raped him. Casper got put into medical at 3 o'clock in the morning from a stab wound and from stitches in his backside. This is reality, man. This was reality. And a lot of people want to hear prison stories, and this is as raw as it gets. These are actual, authentic prison stories. These are not made-up prison stories from people like Kay Farrell, who did 22 months in prison and has 700 videos from prison. 
These are my actual authentic stories that I've seen, that I've witnessed, and life lessons that I've learned. See, there was a lesson to be learned out of this. It was a lesson. And I learned it very quick. Do not open doors. Don't open doors. Do not be too friendly. Do not play with too many people. Do not do anything. See, Casper, he wasn't playing. He wasn't borrowing. He wasn't lending. He wasn't doing any of that. He was just being friendly enough and opening the door enough to where somebody had just got out of confinement, just moved from a different compound. He got out of confinement. They both got put in an empty cell. And he asked the man, hey, man, you want to smoke K2 with me? And the man said, yeah. These are things you have to think about as a gang member, as somebody who's trying to move militant on a compound or just get your life together. Why are you going to smoke and get high and possibly lose control of your thoughts, your feelings, your, your, your stability, everything? You, you, you lose focus of what's going on when you are indulging in these drugs. So... I never seen or heard from Casper again. Casper ended up getting, he get, he got put into confinement under the Prison Rape Intervention Act. Uh, they do have it in prison. It's called PREA, Prison Rape Intervention. Uh, if anybody's been abused or one of your loved ones have been abused in prison, feel free to reach out to the Prison Rape Intervention Act hotline. They will help your loved one um, with Casper. Unfortunately, that's what happened. Like I said, in the beginning of this video, Casper was a solid individual. I've, I've, I've put in work with Casper. I've watched Casper put the knife on somebody. I've watched Casper go and fight the head of the GDs for him to be able to bang as a white boy. And then I watched Casper get raped, put in confinement under the Prison Rape Intervention Act. It's a wild story, man, and it's a wild ball game when you get put behind those walls, bro. Nothing, nothing, nothing is how you think it's going to be. The only thing you could do is maintain, stay drug free and push for a positive future. Because at the end of the day, if you got a release date, like Casper had a release date, he didn't have to go through this. He didn't have to gangbang. He didn't have to do this. He didn't have to, you know, get involved in this type of lifestyle, but he did. And he wasn't on point. He wasn't on his P's and Q's. He wasn't standing on his six P's. Like they like to say. And the brutal outcome is. Casper will never be the same as a man. He will never be the same as a man. That was another episode of Raw Talk. I need y'all to smash that like on your way out. If you haven't already smashed the like, man. I love y'all. We got more content coming soon. I appreciate all my new subscribers. 187,000 new subscribers. I love y'all to death, man.